you're an older subscriber, you know what today is. Hi there, beautiful YouTube. Welcome back to Vintage Leors, a channel dedicated solely to exploring World War II era history on the American home front. I'm Chloe Jean, and if, if you're an older subscriber, you know what today is. And if you're newer to this channel, today is the fourth installment of my video series, World War II Era Accessories and Me, where I take time to delve into a World War II era women's accessories. Today's topic is all about 1940s hats. During World War II, women still wore a lot of hats. It was kind of seen as a morale booster, a way to brighten up any outfit with like shades of like pink and lime green and red, white, and blue, and as a way of expressing yourself in a time of austerity. Though they technically weren't rationed, there was a 33% luxury tax on them, and decorations and materials were rationed like rubber. So getting new hats during World War II were kind of an ordeal, so it became uh, acceptable for women to not wear hats during leisure activities or sports. So during the war, oh, having materials rationed actually kind of changed the way how hats were made and fastened on your head. As I mentioned, rubber was rationed, so the rubber hat band went away and hats were being made with fasteners like combs and bobby pins. There are hundreds, if not millions, styles of 1940s hats. Some are quite newer fashions to our era and some are leftovers from the 1930s. And delving into each and every single one of them is beyond the scope of this video. So I thought I would take a really quick look of some of the most popular hats of the era. And then of course, at the very end, as is my custom, I will take time to showcase the hats in my own reenacting collections. Berets are and most well-known vintage style hats. And during the period, there were four types, the high A beret, the low beret, the pancake beret, and the regular beret. Though they could be made out of straw, they were normally made out of wool felt and the most common colors of red, blue, green, and brown. And in Britain, they were made popular by General Bernard Montgomery of El Almain fame. They have a big brother in the form of the 1940s hat, the Tam O'Shanter, or just Tam. And they're basically wider, bigger, more highly decorated berets. The next hat on our list is actually the pillbox. They made their debut late in the war and became extremely popular for a variety of reasons, mainly that they were readily available to purchase and they were very versatile. They could be worn in both in evening and daytime situations. So a lot of women would pick a style that they uh, liked most and bought several different uh, and, and different fabrics uh, types as well as colors and they could fill out their uh, wardrobe accessories cheaply. Doing a video about 1940s hats is not complete without the turban. The turban is kind of an older fashion but still very in vogue during the war because it made its debut in 1936 and by 1940 it was the hat of the year. And turbans could be quite elaborate. You see velvet turbans with like pleated plumage thingies up here, but in its simplest form, a turban is just a headscarf tied around the head. During the war, we actually saw a resurgence in hats that were fashionable in the past, and one of those was actually 
a hat called the bonnet. Us in the modern era, when we hear the term bonnet, we instantly think of the bonnets worn by Queen Victoria, the straw hats with all the lace and flowers. But World War II bonnets are a little bit different in the fact that they are worn further back on the head and have a more shallow crown. They were decorated with the usual means of adornments for hats of the era and it still had that face shading brim on the front and the side and they did not have any type of chin strap. Another hat that was borrowed from the Victorian period is actually the Victorian picture hat. During World War II, they are known as cartwheel hats. Until uh, Italian straw imports are uh, stopped in 1940 due to the war, they are made out of straw and have shallow crowns like their older counterparts and a wide stiff brim. After the imports are stopped, they are cheaper alternatives are made out of raffita or cotton starched lace or even in the wintertime they could be made out of felt. Uh, they are usually decorated with a long ribbon tied in a bow around the crown. And like the Tam, they have a baby sister uh, version in the form of a sailor slash skimmer hat. Basically a cartwheel hat only with a very very small flat brim. During the war we actually borrowed some hat styles from the men's department in the form of the Derby Bowler Fedora Homburg hats. Derbies and bowlers were mainly worn by teenage girls and had a round crown and rolled back brim. And the Fedora and Homburg hats were basically really worn by women of all eras, especially after Ingrid Bergman made them popular when she wore one in Casablanca. And to avoid the confusion, they were known as casual hats. As I mentioned before, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of styles of hats during the 1940s. So in the interest of keeping this video shorter than usual, I'm just going to take time to run through some um, hats that kind of made the honorable mention list. The, the Snood, which is left over from the 1930s, which Vivian Lee made popular with her portrayal of Scarlett O'Hara in the epic Gone with the Wind. The Chaplet or Curvet, which is basically the 1940s headbandman hats, are the 1940s version of Victorian ladies' riding hats. Cloches, which are the 1940s baby sister version of the 1940s bonnet. And finally, the puff hat. Now, as is my custom with this series, I'm going to take some time to showcase my own personal hat collection. Starting with perhaps the most common hat, a vintage style hat of all time, which is the gray. It came from Amazon in a pack of five, and I only ended up wearing two out of the five. I wear it even in my everyday life. It's my go-to for all season. So yeah, I love it. Next on the list is actually what I have nicknamed my Mary Poppins hat. It's an original and my most recent antique uh, store find. What actual era and style it is, I have no idea. It's my newest, so I'm still trying to figure out what to wear with it, so that's why you haven't seen it here on the channel or on Instagram or Facebook. If you know what type of hat this is, could you drop me a line in the comment section and tell me what it is, because I would love to know anything about like the history of this style of hat. Being the 1940s guru that I am and doing a 1940s fashion accessory video on hats, I could not leave out the turban. I have three of these headscarves that I wear as turbans. 
They are not as elaborate as the 1930s and 40s ones that you sometimes see. It's just a folk scarf that I got off of Etsy that I tie around my head in Rosie Riveter style. And I mainly wear these when I need a really quick, lazy 1940s hairstyle or I'm doing housework. But I just love channeling that 1940s housewife spirit and I really get that out of this these headscarves. Last but not least is actually probably my favorite hat that I own of all time. And that is my cartwheel hat. It is also from Amazon, the original hat. It, if at all possible, had a wider, floppier brim, and it tied under the chin. And after looking at some 40s cartwheel hats, I decided that I was going to unravel uh, the brim a couple inches. I took the ribbon and tied it in a bow around the very shallow crown. And I really, really, really look forward to pulling it out at my summer reenactments. There y'all have it. A brief overview of the hats in our era. I so hope you enjoyed it, this little talk and the tour of this area of my closet. Whether you are old or new to this channel, you being here and supporting me and history means the absolute world to me. And if you have social media and you want to follow me uh, over there, I'm on Instagram at underscore vintagely yours 3945, as well as on Facebook and my username over there is vintagely yours. Before you click out of this video, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I will see all y'all uh, folks in my next video, which will be a fun one. Bye.